Do I buy a Western phone or do I buy a China phone? A question that is becoming more and more valid every single day. Let's find out in this video. So representing the Western market, we're using the Samsung Galaxy S5, a flagship phone from last year which costs roughly $400 now. Representing the Eastern front, we have the Umi Emacs, a $150 Demi flagship. Let's compare the two. So as we all know, Samsung makes good phones. The Samsung Galaxy S5 is built very, very solidly indeed. It's made of pretty much all plastic though, which is a little bit of a disappointment considering its flagship price. It doesn't look too pretty either with its plaster-esque body being ridiculed by the whole tech community. It's fairly thin, fairly light, and fairly comfortable in the hand, but it doesn't really excel in any of those categories. But it does feel solid, that's for sure. Now at 7.9mm, the Umi Emax is actually slimmer than the Galaxy S5. On top of that, it's actually got a metallic finish, which really feels and looks much better than what the S5 has to offer. In terms of the build materials, there's very little between them, with both of them sporting rugged plastic covers. However, the Emax palms like a beauty. When you hold it in your hand, you'll literally fall in love with the device. It feels much, much better. Although the Galaxy S5 definitely has a little bit more character, it's a little bit more distinguished than the Umi Emax, which kind of feels a little bit generic at times, I definitely prefer the way the Emax looks, with the uniqueness of the S5 coming in a bad way. Even though both phones run Android, the experiences couldn't be more different. The large Western manufacturers like Samsung, HTC and LG pile their phones with generic software and bloatware in order to actually string people in and earn money from the app developers. Now, Although these skins are very heavy, they generally perform very well. The updates come consistently and you can be sure that they're going to work. Companies like Umi, Qbot and Bluebu though take a totally different approach. Abandoning all skins, they present you with a stock Android experience which for the most part is actually very very nice. And less money spent developing skins for your Android experience means you can get the phones for cheaper. But even though a lot of them actually come with Lollipop now, the chances of updates are rare and once you have an Android Chinese phone, you're basically stuck with that operating system. And although sometimes it is a bit of a chore to operate the very densely skinned Western manufactured phones, there are benefits, basically in the form of innovation. These Western firms, they're very big, they spend a lot on R&D, and they come out with new technologies, things like fingerprint scanners, heart rate sensors, laser autofocus, dual cameras, U-focus. All this sort of stuff you're not going to get on Chinese phones, which tend to imitate. But the problem with most of these technologies is they're never really expanded on. You see them in one phone, and then they're gone in the next, and they never really reach mainstream adoption. Anyways, now let's check the speakers. There's not really much between them, with the Umi Max actually producing slightly louder volume and a little bit more clarity, and the Samsung Galaxy S5 having just a little bit more bass. Neither of them stand out from the crowd, like the speakers on the HC One M8 or One M9, but then again, neither of them suck, they're just both pretty good. So what about the camera? Well this shot here, taken by the Galaxy S5, getting as close as I possibly could to the pencil is decent. The level of detail is solid but unspectacular, but the colour vibrance is pretty good. The Emax though managed to get about three times as close as the S5 and still stay in focus. Apart from that though, the S5 blows it out the water in terms of camera, capturing more detail, more colour vibrance, and you can really tell Samsung spent a lot of time on their camera app, it's very very efficient and well featured. In terms of storage, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Western phones that do offer external SD cards can take up to 128 gigs, which is huge, but a lot of them don't offer it, whereas just about every single China phone has an SD card slot but only takes up to 32 gigs. With just under 4000 mAh of battery juice, the Emax can last two solid days of use compared to the competition, i.e. Western phones, which tend to last no more than a day and a half. In terms of benchmarks, the phones are totally neck and neck, and this is generally echoed throughout the general usage of the devices. Flicking through the UI is extremely efficient on both. The Galaxy S5 definitely has a better display, and few Chinese phones even come close to the likes of the G4 or the S6 in terms of display quality. These companies know how to make a screen look good. 
but the Emax is not shoddy at all. It actually still produces decent vibrance, pretty good blacks, and a good level of overall brightness, not quite as bright as the S5s. Having said that, they do offer the same resolution, so sharpness is basically on par. Flicking through tabs, multitasking, going into your app drawer, and serving very basic tasks, both firms are more than up to the task. You'd expect the S5 with its supposedly more powerful internals and its more up-to-date operating system to take the lead here, but the Emax holds its own admirably. And when it comes to gaming, the Emacs again barely struggles. The S5 will race through any game you throw at it, 2D, 2.5D, 3D, the most demanding games on the market, no problem. And you can almost say the same for the Emacs, with it only struggling with the top of the line games. Just generally the most demanding 3D titles will pose a bit of an issue, but they're actually still playable, just at a slightly lower frame rate. And to be honest, games like Cartel Kings, as you just saw there, was also playing fine, and that is a beautiful thing to look at. So in this comparison, I've tried to be as fair and unbiased as possible. The Emacs is not the best China phone you can get, and likewise for the Galaxy S5. Both are sort of good phones in either category. Generally, a good Western phone is faster than a good China phone, having the latest Qualcomm or Nvidia chip compared to maybe a MediaTek. Western firms spend a lot on their cameras, and you get very good software with lots of features and good image quality. You can be sure of consistent updates, and you're going to get a screen with some good technology behind it. China phones generally have very little bloatware, so you do get a stock experience which is very efficient. But the real thing here is price. These phones are much cheaper than their equivalent Western counterparts. And yes, those phones might be faster, they might have a better camera or a better display, but China phones are seriously catching up and the difference is nowhere near as much as you'd think it is. These phones used to be plagued with issues from the Play Store not working to having poor connection on Western bands, but as these issues begin to be resolved and the phones get better and better, the true king and the future of smartphones becomes clear. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you liked this video.